This video is sponsored by Tone Gym. Why do we even like harmony? Why would humans have even developed a sensitivity to the interaction of different pitches? Why do we find the sound of consonant harmony like a major chord so pleasing and satisfying? And inversely, why do we have an almost painful reaction to the sound of notes that don't work together, to dissonant notes? So for a relatively simple sounding question, there's a lot to unpack here. So I'm gonna give you the short answer right now, which is that the reason that humans like the sound of harmony is because in every sound that has pitch, including the human voice, there's not just one note, but an entire major chord. There's harmony in every sound we hear that has pitch. The major chord, harmony, is built into the way sound works in our universe. Humanity didn't invent the major chord. It was already here. So that's the short answer. Now let's dive into the long answer. So I think the first step in answering why we like harmony, why we like the interaction between different notes, is to first answer the question of why we are even sensitive to pitch, to the sound of a single note. Why can humans tell if a note is high or low? Why would we have even developed a sensitivity to that at all? Well, it's almost definitely to do with being able to detect and recognize the sound of other animals, whether that's other humans in the form of speech or other animals in our environment like predators and prey. Because if you think about it, the only sounds in the natural world that have pitch, that have periodicity, are other animal cries, right? Other natural sounds like the ocean, the wind, thunder, all of those sounds don't have what we call periodicity. Periodicity is when the sound is vibrating in a regular cycle, a regular period, and therefore has pitch. But those other natural sounds like the ocean don't have periodicity and instead they sound like white noise. They're sort of random cycles of frequencies. So the only sound in our environment that we would have been evolving to be sensitive to, you know, when, when we were um, you know, pre-civilization, is the sound of other animals and humans. So that's almost definitely why we are sensitive to pitch. Humans evolved the ability to recognize the frequency of a pitch to allow them to understand the sound of other animals around them. That of course includes the sound of their prey that they would be stalking, the sound of their predator that they were avoiding, and of course most importantly and most usefully, the sound of the other human beings around them, language. Really, if you think about language, even if you were listening to a foreign speaker, you know, speaking a language that you don't speak, you can tell so much about what they're saying just from the pitch of their voice, right? All that information is coming largely from pitch because if you remove the pitch from voice, then you sound like this. Every note is just the same note and it all sounds very monotone and robotic and I'm not communicating any emotion here. All of the emotion and extra information comes from the pitch. And humans can further develop their natural ability to recognize pitch by training it. Of course, musicians often are able to recognize a lot more about pitch just by hearing it, particularly if they have perfect pitch, which is the ability to hear a note, recognize a pitch just by hearing it. And we know that that is tied to language because, for example, in languages which are considered tonal, like Mandarin Chinese, where the actual pitch at which you say the syllable changes its meaning, those populations have a higher proficiency of perfect pitch. So in Mandarin Chinese, you could say the same syllable, but if it's in a different pitch, if it's in a low pitch or a high pitch, or maybe low moving to high, it's gonna have a different meaning. Ma, 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 ma. So children growing up learning that tonal language are learning an even more advanced perception of pitch. They are required to become even more sensitive to it. And in fact, one study found that 74% of Mandarin speakers who learned a musical instrument before the age of five had perfect pitch, which is much higher than the average in the wider world. So we're pretty sure why we've developed a sensitivity to pitch, to single notes, but why harmony? Why the interaction of multiple notes? Well, the answer may lay actually in the same reasoning, in the fact that we're sensitive to the sound of human voices and animal cries, to periodic sounds in nature. And that's because when we hear a periodic sound, when we hear a sound that has pitch, like the human voice, we're not hearing just one 
frequency. We're not just hearing one note. We're actually hearing a whole set of different frequencies that are all related to each other. But we don't actually perceive them as separate frequencies. We perceive them as one unified tone, and that's happening in our brains. So this is called the harmonic series or the overtone series. And basically what's happening is when something vibrates to create a periodic sound, whether that's vocal cords or a column of air in a flute or a string on a guitar, it's vibrating in its entire form. So for example, if you think about a guitar string, the entire string is vibrating up and down. And that creates what we call the fundamental pitch, the fundamental frequency. But the string isn't vibrating just in its entire form, it's vibrating in different modes as well. It's vibrating at the halfway point as well, and the three-way point, and the four-way point, and the five-way point, six-way, seven-way, into infinity, right? It's vibrating in all of these different modes, these different parts of the string are oscillating in different ways, and each one of those modes, each one of those different vibrations creates a different overtone. So we get the fundamental frequency from the entire length of the string vibrating, but from half the length, we then get a note that is twice as fast. The frequency is double. Then we get one that is three times as fast as the fundamental, and four times and five times. So what are these other notes we get, these overtones? Well, we've got the fundamental frequency, that's the entire length of the string vibrating. Then half the string, well, it's, it's vibrating twice as fast now. And a frequency that is twice as fast as another is an octave apart. That's literally all an octave is. An octave is a two to one relationship. Take any frequency, double it, and you've got the note an octave up. So the first overtone is an octave up, the next overtone in the harmonic series is a perfect fifth away from that previous one. Then the next overtone is a fourth up from the previous one. Then we get a major third up. Then we get a minor third up. And it does keep going on and on up into infinity, but it's these earlier ones here that we hear most prominently. They become increasingly more quiet as we go up the harmonic series. So. If we look at the notes we've got here in the harmonic series, these are notes that are baked into the sound of any speaking voice or any instrumental sound. Well, these are the notes of a major chord. So in the sound of the human voice, in any periodic sound in nature or instrumental, we have a major chord built in. We have these intervals which are widely considered the consonant intervals, the pleasing intervals, and they're actually in order here. Most people, if you survey them, will say that the octave is the most consonant interval, and that's true across almost all cultures as well. And that is the first harmonic we get. The next harmonic we get is the fifth, and that is largely considered the second most consonant interval. And then we get the fourth, and the third, and the minor third. We're basically going down the preference for how consonant things sound. So when sound comes into our ears, we're not hearing the raw audio, so to speak. Our brain is processing it. And when we hear the harmonic series, our brain sums it all together into a unifying tone. So when different frequencies come into our ears before our brain quote unquote lets us hear them, it effectively processes them by summing them together, combining the frequencies together. And this summing is happening in our brains. It's not happening acoustically, it's happening inside our minds and we can prove this to ourselves using something called binaural beats. Basically, we're gonna be played one frequency into our left ear, 440 hertz, and a different but very similar frequency in our right ear, 444 hertz. And what's gonna happen is our brain is going to sum up the difference of those two frequencies, allowing us to hear a third note, a note that's not actually there, what we call a combination tone. We're gonna to hear 440 hertz in one ear, 444 hertz in the other ear, and our brain is also going to allow us to hear four hertz. So this will work best if you have headphones on, but technically will still work if you're not wearing headphones. Let's hear it. So what you heard is you heard the two frequencies, and then you also heard this sort of wow, 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 wow sound as well. That's called beating, and that sound is the difference between the two frequencies. It's four hertz. 4 hertz is such a slow frequency that we perceive it not as a pitch, as a note, but as a pulse, a rhythm, 
uh, wow, wow, wow sort of sound. And why this demonstrates that our brain is the thing doing the sort of maths here, the combination of the different notes, is because we're wearing headphones. Those two frequencies didn't have an opportunity to interact in physical space. The interaction of those two frequencies is happening literally in our minds. As mentioned earlier, humans are not only sensitive to pitch, but we can actually train ourselves to become more sensitive to pitch, and that's a really useful thing to do if you're a musician. And a great way that you can improve your ears is using today's sponsor, Tone Gym. Tone Gym offers a whole range of ear training games to improve your listening skills. For example, their game Route 6 plays you a short chord progression, and you have to identify what those chords are by ear. Or you could play their game Chordless, which instead focuses on chord type, so you have to identify whether the chord is major or minor or diminished, etc. Use the link in the description to start improving your ear today with Tone Gym. So when our brain hears different frequencies coming in, it automatically effectively does maths and sums them together. Here's the difference, like we just demonstrated. And there's actually a really clever experiment we can do, a one final experiment we can do to take advantage of this combination tone phenomena that happens. And it's actually something created by the fantastic YouTuber 12 Tone. What he's created is what sounds like a whole bunch of noise. It's a whole bunch of frequencies, but they're very carefully selected frequencies that at any point in the sound, all of the frequencies we're hearing sum up to create a, a particular note. And that note is going to play a melody. We're effectively going to play a melody with that combination tone, that phantom note that happens just in our mind. So have a listen to this sound. Warning, it is quite loud and a distressing sound, but it does need to be quite loud for this to happen. And what you're going to hear is a, at the top and the sort of higher frequencies, you're going to hear this sort of garbled sound. But hopefully at the bottom, in the lower frequencies, you're going to hear a well-known melody. What you should have heard, hopefully, is down the bottom, you heard the melody of Mozart's Ein Klein Nacht music, this melody. So now that you know what melody you're listening out for, have another listen. And as I said, at the top, you're going to hear this sort of garbled noise, but at the bottom, you're going to hear that melody, that Mozart melody. So that sound is literally only happening in your mind. And we know that because if we record that sound back and analyze it with a computer, there is no melody, no frequencies happening down in that lower section. But we can hear it, it's in our head, because what we perceive as sound is different from the actual sound happening in the environment around us. So what does this have to do with our ability to hear harmony? Why still do we like to hear the sound, for example, of a major chord, and we don't like to hear the sound of like a microtonal cluster? Well, the leading theory really is that our brain has this hardware to perceive related intervals, like the ones in the harmonic series, as a unified tone, a pleasing tone together. And therefore, when we hear harmony created by a musical instrument, it's sort of hijacking that hardware. Leading cognitive psychologist Steven Pinker describes music as auditory cheesecake. In the same way that humans didn't evolve to like cheesecake, but instead evolved to like sugars and fats, and cheesecake is just giving us a massive dose of that thing that our brain is looking for, we didn't evolve to like the sound of music or musical harmony. We evolved to perceive related frequencies. We have this sort of hardware built in, and then when we hear music, when we hear musical harmony, it's sort of giving us a massive dose of that thing that we love to hear. Our brain is getting heavily stimulated in this, this sort of hardware is getting hijacked and overloaded by the sound of musical harmony. Because it is the same intervals, right, that we get in the harmonic series, but on a far more elaborate scale. So when we hear consonant intervals, like the octave, the perfect fifth, the major third, intervals that occur in the harmonic series, 
they gel together, our brain loves them, and that's why we like them. And inversely, when we hear intervals that don't work together, that beat against each other, our brain is trying to sum them together and failing, and that creates this sort of painful experience. Now, I don't know anything further than that, right? Because we don't really know how that happens on a literal, physical, neurological level, right? With the different synapses shooting off, you know, that's well beyond my pay grade. But that is the leading theory to why we would have possibly evolved to have this ability to enjoy the sound of different pitches interacting. Now, there's one asterisk that I need to address right now and one that many commenters may have already lost patience with and got down in the comment section and told me about, and that is temperament. Now, so far in this video, all of the intervals I've played you, all of the major thirds, all of the perfect fifths, they have all been justly tuned. So they've been tuned to the perfect idyllic intervals, three to two for a perfect fifth, five to four for a major third. But in almost all modern music, particularly on anything which has fixed pitches like a piano or a guitar, we don't use those justly tuned intervals. We use slightly adjusted intervals in a system called 12-tone equal temperament. Now, I won't go into too much depth right now about what that is. I've done that in a separate video. You can go check that out. But effectively, what that means is when we play modern music, pretty much any music you hear, all of the major thirds, for example, are actually 14 cent sharp. They're 14% away from where they should be, right? A cent is just a one hundredth of a semitone. That's how we measure how out of tune something is. Basically, the major thirds are all out of tune. And even the perfect fifths are two cent out of tune. So if we evolve to hear these perfect intervals that are in the harmonic series, why do we still get stimulus from hearing these intervals that are actually not quite tuned right? Well, it's not completely clear, but to me, the most obvious answer is that our brains are just not that precise. Our perception of pitch is quite forgiving and it doesn't have to be exactly right. And that might actually be part of how we evolve because even though in theory, when sounds vibrate in nature, we get this perfect harmonic series of all these perfectly just tuned intervals, there's this thing called inharmonicity where due to the physical nature of the thing that's vibrating, maybe it can't vibrate perfectly freely, maybe it's slightly restricted, and that will actually change the tuning of some of those harmonics. So to account for that, perhaps our brains had to develop a more forgiving sense of pitch. And, you know, we don't have to hear an exactly in tune perfect fifth. We can allow it to be a little bit out and we can still perceive what it's meant to be. But then, of course, there is eventually a threshold where it gets so far from what it's meant to be that we no longer perceive it um, as such. So that is ultimately the best answer I can give for why we like harmony. Of course, this isn't conclusive. We can't get in a time machine and go back and survey humanity across the eons and try and get a more objective answer to this question. You know, we never really will know why we evolved in this way. But that is the leading theory that I can present to you today. If you have any other ideas, any other questions, let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next video. Wake up and fight to feel